2917-10,000. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. On this occasion, take a little time to listen for the addition of our knowledge to recognize the struggle of Muslims in extending the teachings of Islam to our present time that Islam has had its glory in various predecessors, ranging from religion, politics, philosophy, geography, medical and others. All knowledge was collected and spread around the world. The Safavid dynasty, 1501-1736, the ruling dynasty of Iran that established the 12 Shias as Iran's state religion, was a major factor in the emergence of a unified national consciousness among the country's various ethnic and linguistic elements. The Safavids were descendants of Sheikh Af al-Din, 1253-1334, of Ardabil, the head of the Sufi order of Afaviya, Afawiya. Although Afaviya's original order was originally Sunni, following the jurisprudence of the Shfai school, over time it gravitated towards Shiism, perhaps due to the popular worship of Al. By the time of the order's fourth leader, Sheikh Junaid, the order had become explicitly Shiite. The Mongol invasion that began in the 13th century drastically changed the Islamic world. Not only did it end the rule of the Abbasid dynasty and split the eastern center of Islam, but the arrival of new Turkic nations and dynasties in much of Islam shifted the axis of power into the hands of Turkic clans. The Afav order in Ardabil, however, was far enough away from any political center to remain neutral, allowing the Persian mystics to build their own strong following. Safavid history begins with the founding of the Safaviyya by its founder Safiyad din Ardabili, 1252-1334. In 700 or 1301, Safi al-Din assumed the leadership of Zahadiyya, an important Sufi order in Jilin, from his spiritual master and father-in-law Zahid Jalani. Due to Safi al-Din's great spiritual charisma, the order came to be known as Safaviyya. The Safavid order soon gained great influence in the city of Ardabil, and Hamdullah Mustafi notes that most of the people of Ardabil were followers of Safi al-Din. The religious poetry of Safi al-Din, written in Old Azari a now extinct language of northwest Iran and accompanied by paraphrases in Persian that aided its understanding, has survived to this day and is of linguistic importance. After Safi al-Din, leadership of the Safaviyya passed to Sadr al-Din Musa, 794 or 1391-92. The order at this time transformed into a religious movement that conducted religious propaganda throughout Iran, Syria, and Asia Minor, and most likely retained its Sunni Shifi'i origins at the time. The leadership of the order passed from Sadr Uddin Musa to his son Khwaja Ali, 1429, and subsequently to his son Ibrahim, 1429-47. When Sheikh Junaid, the son of Ibrahim, took over the leadership of the Safaviyya in 1447, the history of the Safavid movement changed radically. According to historian Roger Savory Savory, Sheikh Junaid was dissatisfied with spiritual authority and he sought material power. At the time, the most powerful dynasty in Iran was the Karakoyanlu, Black Sheep, dynasty, whose ruler Jahan Shah ordered Junaid to leave Ardabil or he would bring ruin and destruction upon the city. Junaid sought refuge with Jahan Shah's Kara Koyunlu rival, A.Q. Koyunlu, Turkmen White Sheep, Khan Uzun Hassan, and strengthened his relationship by marrying Uzun Hassan's sister Khadija Begum. Junaid was killed in an attack on the Shirvan Shah region and was succeeded by his son Haider Safavi. Haider married Martha Alam Shah Begum, the daughter of Uzun Hassan, who gave birth to Ismail I, the founder of the Safavid dynasty. Martha's mother, Theodora better known as Despina Katun was a Pontic Greek princess, daughter of the great Komnenos John IV of Trebizond. She had married Uzun Hassan in exchange for the great Komnenos protection from the Ottomans. After Uzun Hassan's death, his son Yakub felt threatened by the growing influence of the Safavid religion. Yakub allied himself with Shirvan Shah and killed Haider in 1488. At this time, most Safaviyya were Turkic-speaking Oghuz nomadic clans from Asia Minor and Azerbaijan and were known as Kizilbash, Red Heads, for their red headgear. The Kizilbash were warriors, spiritual followers of Haider, 
and the source of Safavid military and political power. After Hyder's death, the Safavid rallied around his son Ali Mirza Safavi, who was also pursued and later killed by Yaqub. According to official Safavid history, before dying, Ali had appointed his younger brother Ismail as the spiritual leader of the Safavid. Initially, the Safavids were a spiritual rather than a denominational response to the upheaval and unrest in northwestern Iran slash eastern Anatolia in the decades following the Mongol invasion. Its orientation became more recognizably Shia around 1400. In the 15th century, the Safavidia gradually gained political and military influence in the power vacuum triggered by the fall of the Timurid dynasty. After becoming the leader of the Safavidia in 1447, Sheikh Junaid a descendant of Sheikh Safi al-Din turned it into a Shiite revolutionary movement with the aim of seizing power in Iran. Beginning during the 15th century, the Ottomans expanded Anatolian territory and centralized control by persecuting Shia. They outlawed it at the turn of the century. In 1501, various disgruntled militias from Azerbaijan and eastern Anatolia known as the Kazilbash, Azeri Four, Red Heads, because of their red headgear, united with the Ardabil Safavia to capture Tabriz from the then-ruling Sunni Turkmen alliance known as A.K. Koyunlu, Emirate of the White Sheep, under the leadership of Alwin. The Safavia was led by a 15-year-old boy, Ismail I. To prove their political origin, the Safavid rulers claimed descent from Imam Ali, a cousin of the Prophet Muhammad and his wife Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad, through the seventh Imam Musa al qasim To further legitimize his rule, Ismail I also added the claim of Sasanian royal heritage after becoming Shah of Iran to his own lineage. With the capture of Tabriz, the Safavid dynasty officially began. In May 1501, Ismail I declared Tabriz as his capital and himself the Shah of Azerbaijan. Ismail I continued to expand his base in northwestern Iran. He was declared Shah of Iran in 1502. Throughout the rest of the decade, Ismail I fended off Ottoman attacks, rooted out the remnants of a rival faction, called AK Koyunlu and continued to expand his territories Hamadan in 1503, Shiraz and Kerman in 1504, Najaf and Karbala in 1507, Van in 1508, Baghdad in 1509, Khorasan and Herat in 1510. In 1511, the Uzbeks of the northeast were pushed across the Oxus River where they captured Samarkand and established the Shaibanid dynasty, and from there they would continue to attack the Safavids. During his reign, the official language at court was Azerbaijani. Meanwhile, the navy less Safavids lost the island of Hormuz to the Portuguese in 1507. In 1514, Ottoman Sultan Selim I invaded western Armenia, causing the unprepared Safavid army to retreat. The Safavid troops were poorly armed, while the Ottoman troops had rifles and artillery. The Ottomans pressed on and on August 23, 1514, succeeded against the Safavids in the Battle of Calderon west of Tabriz. The Safavids were defeated and, as Ottoman forces moved into Tabriz, engaged in a scorched earth battle. Tabriz was captured but the Ottoman army refused to follow the Safavids into the Persian highlands and in the winter, retreated from Tabriz. This pattern of warfare was repeated under Shah Thomas I and Sultan Suleiman I. Establishment of Shia as the state religion Although the Safavids were not the first Shia rulers in Iran, they played a significant role in making Shia the official religion in Iran. However, Shia communities already existed in some cities like Qam and Sabzivar as early as the 8th century. In the 10th and 11th centuries, the Buwayhids, who were the Zaydi branch of Shia, ruled in Fars, Isfahan and Baghdad. As a result of the Mongol conquests, and the relative religious tolerance of the Illyrian, Shia dynasties were established in Iran Sarbidaran and Khorasan being the most important. Shah al jidi Sultan of the Ilkhanate converted to the Shia 12 in the 13th century. Despite all this, the general population of Iran remained largely Sunni until the Safavid period. After the conquest of Iran, Ismail I made conversion compulsory for most of the Sunni population. Sunni scholars, called ulama, 
from the word alam, knowledge, were killed or exiled. Ismail I, despite being a heterodox shure and not conforming to orthodox shure, Momin, 1985, supported shure religious leaders, giving them land and money in return for their loyalty. Later, during the Safavid and especially Qajar periods, the role of Shia clerics increased and they were able to exercise a role in socio-political life independent of the government. Regardless of the Sufi origins of the Safavid dynasty, most Sunni or Shia Sufi groups were banned by the Nematullah High Order. Iran became a feudal theocracy, there was no separation between religion and state, the Shah was considered the divinely ordained head of both. In the following centuries, these religious divisions would strengthen Iran's internal cohesion and national feeling and trigger attacks from its Sunni neighbors. Constant war with the Ottomans led Shah Thomas I to move the capital from Tabriz to the inland city of Kazvin in 1548. Later, Shah Abbas I moved the capital even further into central Iran, to the city of Isfahan, building a new city next to the ancient Persian one. The Safavids eventually succeeded in establishing a new Persian national monarchy. In July 1501 Ismail was crowned Shah, although his area of control was initially limited to Azerbaijan. In the next 10 years he conquered most of Iran and annexed the Iraqi provinces of Baghdad and Mosul. Although these areas were predominantly Sunni, he proclaimed Shiism the state religion and enforced its beliefs and prayers in the mosques of his domains. In August 1514 Ismail was seriously defeated at Caldron by his Sunni rival, the Ottoman Sultan Selim I. Thereafter, the continuing struggle against the Sunnis the Ottomans in the west and the Uzbeks in the northeast damaged Safavid Kurdistan, Diyarbakir, and Baghdad while Tabriz was constantly under threat. Iran was significantly weakened during the reign of Ismail's eldest son, Shahamsbai, 1524-76, and the persistent and unopposed Turkmen incursions into the country intensified under his incompetent successor. The Ottoman Turks and Safavids fought over the fertile plains of Iraq for more than 150 years. Ismail I's conquest of Baghdad in 1509 was followed only by his defeat of Ottoman Sultan Suleiman I in 1534. In 1588 Abs was elevated to the throne. Realizing the limitations of his military power, Abs made peace with the Ottomans on unfavorable terms in 1590 and directed his onslaught against the Uzbeks. Meeting with little success, Abs engaged in major military reforms. The power of the Kazilbash was reduced, while the use of firearms was expanded. Abbas I first fought against the Uzbeks, recapturing Herat and Masihad in 1598. Then he turned against Iran's archenemy, the Ottomans, recapturing Baghdad, eastern Iraq and the Caucasian provinces in 1616 throughout the years 1603 to 1618, marking the first major Safavid victory over the Ottomans. He also used his new power to expel the Portuguese from Bahrain, 1602, and, with British help, from Hormuz, 1622, in the Persian Gulf, an important link in Portuguese trade with India. He expanded commercial relations with the British East India Company and the Dutch East India Company. Abbas was thus able to break the dependence on Kizilbash for military power indefinitely, and was therefore able to centralize full control for the first time since the establishment of the Safavid state. Three armies were formed, all trained and armed in early modern fashion and financed from the royal treasury, the Gulam, slaves, the Tefanki, musketeers, and the Topchi, artillery. With his new army, Abs defeated the Turks in 1603, forced them to relinquish all the territory they had captured, and took Baghdad. He also expelled, 1602, 1622, the Portuguese traders who had seized the Persian Gulf island of Hormuz in the early 16th century. Another campaign, the Safavids recaptured Baghdad in 1624 during the Ottoman Safoy War, 1623-39, but lost it again. Murad IV in 1638 after Abbas died. 
From then on a treaty signed at Khazari Sharan known as the Treaty of Zuhab was drawn up delineating the border between Iran and Turkey in 1639, a border that still stands in northwest Iran slash southeast Turkey. The 150-year tug of war further cemented the Sunni and Shia divide in Iraq. Because of his obsessive fear of assassination, Shah Abbas would kill or blind any member of his family who aroused his suspicions. His eldest son, Crown Prince Mohammed Bakr Mirza, was executed following palace intrigue involving several Circassians, while two others were blinded. As the other two sons had died before him, the result was a personal tragedy for Shah Abbas. When he died on January 19, 1629, he had no son to succeed him. Safi was crowned on January 28, 1629, at the age of 18. Safi was one of Shah Abbas' grandsons. Safi died on May 12, 1642, and was buried in Qam. He was succeeded by his son, Abbas, too. His death was related to drinking. According to one account, found in Archangelo Lamberti's Relation de la Calchide O.U. Mangrelli, 1654, Safi died in a drinking contest with Shedden Chalads, a famous Georgian drinking champion invited to Isfahan from Mingrelia. In 1659, the Kingdom of Kakiti rose up against Iran's Safavid rule due to a policy change that included the mass settlement of Kizilbash Turkic tribes in the region to repopulate the province. After Shah Abbas' earlier mass deportation of between 130,000 and 200,000 Georgians who fled to mainland Iran and the massacre of thousands more in 1616 left the province without a significant population. The Bakhtrioni Rebellion was defeated under the personal direction of Shah Abbas II himself. However, strategically, this was still inconclusive. Iranian authority was restored in Kikidi, but the Kizilbash Turks were prevented from settling in Kikidi, which undermined Iran's planned policy in the respective province. More importantly, the Dutch East India Company and later the British used their superior maritime power to control the trade routes in the western Indian Ocean. As a result, Iran was cut off from foreign relations with East Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, and South Asia. Land trade grew rapidly, as Iran was able to further develop land trade with Northern and Central Europe in the second half of the 17th century. By the end of the 17th century, Iranian merchants established a permanent presence north of Narva on the Baltic Sea, in what is now Estonia. The Dutch and British were still able to drain the Iranian government of most of its precious metal supplies. With the exception of Shah Abbas II, the Safavid rulers after Abbas I were considered ineffective, and the Iranian government went into decline and finally collapsed when a serious military threat appeared on its eastern borders in the early 18th century. The end of Abbas II's reign, 1666, marked the beginning of the end of the Safavid dynasty. Despite declining revenues and military threats, the later shahs led lavish lifestyles. Sultan Hosein (1694–1722), in particular, was known for his love of wine and disinterest in government. In 1732, through the Treaty of Resht, and in 1735, the Treaty of Ganja, he negotiated treaties with the government of Empress Anna Ioannovna that resulted in the return of the recently annexed Iranian territories making most of the Caucasus fall back into Iranian hands, while building an Iranian-Russian alliance against the common Ottoman enemy. In the Ottoman-Iranian War, 1730-35, he reconquered all the territories lost to the Ottoman invasions of the 1720s, as well as afterward. With the Safavid state and its territories secure, in 1738 Nader conquered Hataki's last stronghold in Kandahar, in the same year, needing luck to aid his military career against the imperial enemies of the Ottoman and Russian empires, he began his invasion of the rich but weak Mughal Empire accompanied by the people the Georgian Erekel II occupied Ghazni, Kabul, Lahore, and as far away as Delhi, in India, while he utterly humiliated and plundered the militarily inferior Mughals. 
These cities were later inherited by the Afghan military commander Abdali. Ahmad Shah Durrani, who later founded the Durrani Empire in 1747, Nadir had effective control under Shah Tamas II and then ruled as regent of the infant Abbas III until 1736 when he was himself crowned as Shah. Soon after Nader Shah's assassination in 1747 and the disintegration of his short-lived empire, the Safavids were reinstated as Shahs of Iran to provide legitimacy to the nascent Zand dynasty. However, Ismail III's brief puppet regime ended in 1760 when Karim Khan felt strong enough to assume nominal power of the country and officially end the Safavid dynasty. Conclusion the Safavid Empire lasted until its collapse in 1736. Nevertheless, the influence it left behind was important for Iran for centuries to come. The Sawafi dynasty originated from the Safavid order founded by Shafi al-Din in Azerbaijan. In its development, it gained many followers, even up to the leadership of Sadr al-Din Musa, who succeeded Shafi al-Din. However, the Safavid movement began to change in the mid-15th century, when it was led by Sadr al-Din Musa's great-grandson, Sheikh Junaid. Sheikh Junaid was a power-hungry figure, so the Safavid order became militant and began to expand its influence in the political and military fields. The Safavid movement then moved into Iran, where it was captured by the Timurid government founded by Timur Lenk in the 14th century. Since the decline of the Timurids, Iran has been politically divided, and various Shia religious movements were born. One of the most politically powerful was the Safavid Kizilbash, led by Shah Ismail I. Ismail I established the Safavid Empire in 1501, making him the first king and founder of the Sawafi dynasty. Kings of the Safavid Empire Ismail I, 1501-1524, Tomas Bai, 1524-1576, Ismail II, 1576-1577, Muhammad Kodabanda, 1577-1587, Abbas I, 1587-1629, Safi Mirza, 1628-1642, Abbas II, 1642-1667, Suleiman, 1667-1694, Hussein, 1694-1722, Tomas II, 1722 to 1732, Abbas III, 1733 to 1736. At its peak, the empire controlled what is now Iran, the Republic of Azerbaijan, Bahrain, Armenia, Eastern Georgia, parts of the North Caucasus, including Russia, Iraq, Kuwait, and Afghanistan, as well as parts of Turkey, Syria, Pakistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. Progress was also made on the economic front, marked by control of the Hermas Islands and the port of Gumrun, which was transformed into Bandar Abbas. As a result, the Safavids controlled trade between the West and the East. The economic life of the kingdom was also supported by abundant agricultural products. In the field of science, there are several names of great scientists from the Safavid era, namely Baha al-Dina al-Sayarazi, Sadr al-Din al-Sayarazi, and Muhammad al-Bakir ibn Muhammad Damad. Meanwhile, the progress of the Safoy kingdom in the field of architecture was marked by the establishment of a number of magnificent buildings, such as mosques, schools, hospitals, and various public facilities. The decline of the Safoy kingdom was felt after Abbas I abdicated the throne in 1628. The reason is, the leaders afterwards paid little attention to the progress of the government and its people. In addition, the upheaval between the Shia and Sunni Islamic groups also caused the kingdom to decline. Then in 1722, there was an Afghan uprising led by Mir Mahmud, who managed to occupy the capital city of Isfahan. In 1729, Tomas II had captured the palace of Isfahan with the help of General Nadir of the Khazars in Russia and restored the kingdom. However, on March 8, 1736, King Abbas III finally stepped down, marking the demise of the Safavid Empire. And that's the end of our discussion in this video. Well, if you are curious about the continuation of the history of the Islamic Kingdom that makes you curious, you can follow it in our video. That's all for our historical discussion in this video. Hopefully our knowledge is useful for ourselves and for others. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.